everyone. It's Scott Ackerman, your old buddy, host of Comedy Bang Bang. You know, if you want to listen to Comedy Bang Bang without ads and get access to our older episodes, all of the older episodes that are so classic, well, there's, I'm sorry, there's just no way to do that. Ah, uh, except by signing up for Stitcher Premium. That's right. Just go to stitcherpremium.com or the premium tab in your Stitcher app and sign up with the promo code CBB to get a free month of premium listening. You get ad-free listening to Comedy Bang Bang, all your favorite Earwolf and Stitcher shows, plus our full episode archive and your premium subscription helps support us and the show directly too. That's stitcherpremium.com, promo code CBB for a free month of Stitcher Premium. Thanks! There's nothing more attractive than confidence other than horses. Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Thank you to Tootie Butt Tootie Butt. Oh, Tootie Butt Tootie Butt is back. Uh, catchphrase superstar, Tootie Butt Tootie Butt. We need some new blood. I'm looking at these catchphrases. We have Tootie Butt Tootie Butt, Euripides Shorts, uh, Side of McG. All of the catchphrase superstars, Reese Makes Words, they've all gotten several catchphrases on the air. Where is yours? Why don't you submit something? Uh, if you want to hear your name on this uh, incredible podcast, Comedy Bang Bang, which I'll introduce in a second, then you should submit one. And how to do that? Who knows? Welcome to the show. My name is Scott Ackerman. We have an incredible show coming up for you today. We have an author coming up a little bit later. We have an entrepreneur. Whoa! A show with an entrepreneur. Boy, it's been a minute since we've had on an entrepreneur, but we will see what they sell, why they sell it who they sell it to, where they sell it, who, what, where, why, the reporter's questions, what, what am I missing, who, what, where, why, when, how, how they sell it, how they sell it. That'll be coming up a little later. But before we get to them, we need to check in with an old friend. Uh, I, I hesitate to even describe his profession because I don't remember what it is, <laughs> um, I believe. He has had several, he's uh, several new jobs as, as it's said, uh, but uh, let's welcome him back to the show. Please welcome back Rudy North. Hello, Rudy. I'm coming in hot, 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 Scotty. <laughs> the old Buster Poindexter. Scott, I'm coming in hot as hell. It is the middle of a heat wave, baby. Oh, Woo, my skin damn. is hurt. You are, you are right about that. Uh, uh, are you a uh, proponent of climate change? I'll tell you what. It's an inconvenient truth, Scott. <laughs> it certainly is. It's very inconvenient, especially if you're if you're like me and your power goes out in the middle of the heat wave. Then uh, for two that's days, the most inconvenient <laughs> shit. Don't open your fridge is what I heard, Scott. <laughs> that's right. We did not. The one thing I heard is don't open your fridge. Don't open that. Whatever you do, do not open do that. Do not fridge. open that fridge. Listen Get away me. from that fridge. Get away from the fridge, <laughs> Scott. I'm covered in hot. Man, it's you been are a while, so hot. Man. Yeah, are you? you are piping. I'm piping hot, Scott. How uh, are you doing? I'm doing really good. It's great to see you, Rudy North. Uh, catch me up. I do not okay, remember Scott, exactly um, what happened. I don't know how is, to do this. If, yeah, this if is there's exactly, some way that you could talk about what happened um, in an episode that occurred mm -hmm. before this one. I don't know how better to say that. but Well, Scott, previously on Comedy Bag Bag. <laughs> That's it. A lot of shit has happened, and that is why I am here, Scott. Really? Ooh, that, that felt good. Hold on, hold on. Let me just say I did a previously on. I got it out in two sentences. That felt good. Whew. Yeah, the, usually your previously on's last, you know, it's like the final episode of Lost or the uh, 100th episode of Buffy where they go through the entire five years. You realize you were, you were dead or some shit. Look, Scott, um, I have been at a facility uh, in Malibu. Oh. Oh. And it is, it's called Simplify Without the Vowels. So, so it's wait, like is, 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 is why there? Because why is sometimes a vowel? They why use two Y's. They really use Y's. So it's S-M-P-L-Y-F-Y. -Y. So simp, like simp. how someone would describe you sometimes. <laughs> Some people would be say I simp been hard. Um, but, and then, <laughs> then plify. But a lot of people say I comp as well, Scott. <laughs> That's Look, true. This That's place a is a cannon rehab facility, Scott. <laughs> oh, I see. 
This takes care of, of okay, so if people haven't heard Rudy on this show before, Rudy, you a lot of stuff you have a happened. very you have you you've been with us how many years at this point? I, three maybe or three so? or four. Who knows? It three feels like an eternity, Scott, because you started off kind of simple. You had you were simple. you were a dirt bag. I was a dirt bag from Florida who who could take people's jobs by punching them in the throat. Now already that is a lot, right? Scott? That's a, that's almost a hat on a hat at that point. But, but then but you're adding like a stovepipe on top of that. But the, because of my addiction, Scott, I threw in that I was immortal. I threw in that <laughs> I also had the speed force powers. I also, at some point, developed the powers of the force, Scott. And <laughs> not just the speed force, but the regular force. The regular force, just Star okay. Wars force. Midi chloroquines. The midi chlorians. Or, or is that hydroxychloroquine? What am I? I am I you're thinking hydroxychloroquine. It's the midi chlorians, and they got to wipe that out. What about adrenochrome? Have you drinking your adrenochrome? I have Lately. not, Scott. What the hell is that? I'm scared. <laughs> no, that's what we get from the blood of young <laughs> young children. Oh, yes, celebrities. yes, yes. Of course, yeah. We're all having, we have a bunker under the Hollywood sign. Yeah, <laughs> okay, whatever. Look, Scott, so I'm here to say that um, I am 52 weeks sober from making new canon, Scott. Whoa, congratulations. And you got this your is chip. the step. Yeah, this is the step they Did call. Did you say the, 52 weeks? This is the step they call the new 52, Scott. <laughs> why didn't you, why don't they just call it the year? No, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 like, it seems like it would be. I guess it's sort of, you know, when, it, works when you think about it, it's more an achievement to do 52 of something than just yeah, one of something. Yeah, because apparently they say there's something about a leap year that throws it off. But I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's <laughs> right. one day. But they call it the new 52, Scott, and I'm here to clean up my cannon, Scott. Okay, so wh- wh- when you first started, you were just a dirtbag who would throat punch people and swap jobs. I am jobs still a dirtbag, Scott. I have my powers back. I was never you the devil. You have what powers back? My power of punching people in the throat being able <laughs> okay, to take their not jobs, the speed Scott. force power. Speed force powers? That's crazy. That's the that's flash, gone. Scott. That's the flash. <laughs> <laughs> what was I doing? That was the flash. Okay, so that's gone. That's you no gone. longer harness uh, the, the, the force. We'll say this. We still had Speed Force Thanksgiving, but it exists in my head when I was strapped to like a psychiatric ward or something. So, so this is sort of like Flashpoint in a you way. Were, we're, we have to cl- <laughs> uh, we're cleaning up the cannon, Scott. So, okay. Uh, so, uh, simplify. This is, this is simplify. Oh, but it feels good, Scott. Do you feel that? I, it feels good because I, the the more unwieldy it gets to talk to a guest, uh, it's impenetrable for the new listeners. So that, that's what I was thinking. A lot know? like this conversation so far. Yeah, it's, <laughs> for the new listeners, you're probably like, "What the hell what is are going they on? talking about?" But we we what we're doing here is we're we're jettisoning all of it, all of it, and now you are back to just being a simple dirtbag who mm-hmm. likes to throat punch people, who likes to swap jobs with them. Nothing more, nothing less. And guess what? What's that? I got a new job. Oh, oh, by the way, that's another part of your canon is that's you like to say parody I got a of Huey job. Lewis to say you got a new job. That, do. that remains. That's that remains. Gonna, that's going to stay. That has to stay. All right. That's cool. It's okay, though, because there are there are. Do you boundaries. need to call Simplify or? No, no, no. There are canon boundaries and we're, we're okay. I got we're my okay. powers okay. back. I got You don't new... need to call your sponsor. Do you have a sponsor over there at Simplify? I do have a sponsor. Who's that? Uh, Cake Boss. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's been he's been canon he's been canon. He's one of the uh, worst sober. offenders. He's he's been canon sober for a while, Scott. Really? Because so, uh, I, yeah. I I believe that I uh, ran into him when we were on the road last year in late yeah. 2019. So he's almost got a new 52 as well. That that was what you call yeah. He has a new 52. He rehab he relapsed in that day when he came on the show. Oh, but, I see. Okay. Whew, all right, Scott. Well, tell me about your new job. Check this out, Scott. I'm a Zoom security guard. Whoa. I don't know what that means. I was impressed, and then I realized I have no idea what that means. So here's what it is, Scott. You've been hearing about people jumping in Zooms. Uh, we're on a Zoom right now. I don't we are on a Zoom tales right now. out of school right uh, here on the podcast. We are not together. We are, we are not distanced. together. We are socially distant. And I'll tell you what. I am protecting this Zoom from anybody who would hop on and say, like, Baba Booey or some shit, you know? <laughs> well, you just said Baba Booey. What do you mean, Baba Booey, Baba Booey? <laughs> You're not, you, <laughs> Zoom security what? guard, protect thyself. Wait a second. 
Did I do the thing where in the paradox I created my own problem? <laughs> I oh, think you on, may have. We got to oh, rehab it. Call up King Boss. Call up King Boss. I got to call up King Boss. Okay. I, I, it's okay. That didn't happen, Scott. That didn't okay, happen. That didn't I'm a Zoom no. security guard. You're a Zoom security guard. Okay. I've heard about this because people have been on Zooms. I don't yes. know what some of the more famous examples of it are. Well, there are a lot of really uh, troubling examples where people come on and then like show their genitals and stuff or say something mm. racist, you know. So there's nothing fun to talk about there or both which actually i feel like that would be interesting can it be racist to show your genitals let me think about that (laughs) like what would the example of that be that's a good question (laughs) like Um, where someone shows their genitals okay here's here's how it could be racist scott if a white guy shows his genitals and he goes look at my tiny dick look at my tiny dick (laughs) not like your big old black dicks (laughs) okay yeah that which which in a way is not quite it's not like Make a, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, that's, it's that's racist the, because of the generalization. That's now. the, yes, exactly. That's the racism, though, that people are, are not, you know, they don't mind all that much. Yeah, but you know what? You know, some of the black, some of the black men with medium sized penises do mind. They do mind because then suddenly expectations. Created these expectations. All of a sudden, crazy Rudy North, high. All of a, all of a sudden, Rudy North be trying to have sex with somebody. They'd be like, oh. <laughs> Wait, is that part of my canon too? I got a medium oh, no. sized penis. <laughs> you have a medium sized penis now. That's it's fine, though, but that's normal. Scott. But canon that's a, is starting over now, so that's it's okay. Fine. It's These fine. are normal pieces of canon we could all live with. Whew, okay. I got a new job. I'm a Zoom security guard, Scott. So, yeah, you know, I sort of monitor the boards. You know, I have a, right now I have an extra screen up that's just scrolling like the Matrix right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you've been hired by, uh, who, who's hired you to do this? This some dude named Kevin. <laughs> Wait a minute, is he, is he wearing an apron when he hired you? Yeah, he was wearing some sort of Chef Kevin apron or some shit <laughs> Oh, okay I think he I, might be a chef, but he also does podcast stuff Wait a minute, so you're not a guest on this show today You're just the security no, actually, guard that I'm yes, talking to? That's right, Scott So uh, that is, I normally am not the first person you talk to I mean, I normally come in a little bit But today, I just want to set the tone that When you have your show, you bring in your guests I will be bouncing any motherfucker that hop up in this zoo Okay, well, this is a problem because the show okay. normally has an open door policy. Say when what? We've got, yeah, when we've gone to Zoom, it's now basically anyone who gets the Zoom link can jump on and talk to us. Open so, door policy. Yeah. <sighs> okay. All right. So I guess my job, I, I don't really, I don't have, you say my job is sort of obsolete. I don't really need well, to, Well, I, I will tell you that uh, uh, if one of our two scheduled guests, mm-hmm. if, if if they get confrontational with me, every once yeah, in a while, I'll, I'll maybe, have a guest yeah. on, yeah, that who just seems to not like me and gets confrontational <laughs> with me. Usually yeah. it's it's all, <laughs> they're all men sound of like a certain cake age. Boss somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They all yeah. sound like varieties of the cake they boss. All varieties of the cake boss that just get really contentious with right. you. But you know what, Scott? I guess what you're saying is that my job is sort of obsolete and... And, um, no, you know, no, 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 you know, no, 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 wait, Scott, did you know my arms yeah. can stretch like stretch arms wrong? <laughs> okay. Uh, that's new. That's new. Yeah. How is that going to help us? Wait, I mean, uh, I just, just I want to be interesting, Scott. So, um, ow, who just hit me in the back? That of the was head? me. That was me, Scott. I did a quick back ahead <laughs> reach around. <laughs> Is that what really what we want to call it? Oh <laughs> Why don't we call it a stretch Armstrong Scott, slap? That's the cannon now. It's a back. Oh, ahead, no. It's a back ahead reach around. But I do have very long arms that can stretch, and um, how, but everything how, else is normal, Scott. Everything I, else I mean, is normal. Everything else is normal. How did you get this job, by the way? Because normally you're not just hired by someone. Normally mm-hmm. you you throat punch someone and take their place. Mm-hmm. So there was sort of a pilot program going on at um, Crossroads. Oh, I, I, I guess I don't know exactly what a pilot program is. Uh, Interesting. They were, I know they what were a pilot is. I've shot many of them. <laughs> you don't know oh, what a pilot unsuccessful. program is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. Uh, here's, here's what a pilot program is. They were trying it out at Crossroads here in Los Angeles, Scott. Okay. And, you know, there was this you guy. Can't just, by the way, you can't just say, here's what a pilot program is. They mm-hmm. were doing one. <laughs> like, you have to explain it. <laughs> okay. They were. Here's what they were doing. A lot of people were breaking into these Zooms across in all these schools, Scott. So a a very wealthy school here in Los Angeles decided to hire a security guard. Okay. 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 And who was that security guard? Terry Crews. Oh, Terry Crews was. Terry Crews was the security guard. Wow. He he has so many side hustles. He has a ton of side hustles. He's out there doing, he's he's, uh, got Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He's He's got got the the power of marriage. He's he's going out there uh, talking shit to Gabrielle (laughs) Union. He's got so much going on. Sort of internet troll. That's one of his things too. So I punched him in the throat, Scott, of course. 
And of course, and he had no defense for this because he's a huge guy. He is, but Scott, my arms could stretch, so I was very far away. Oh, okay. Plus, I bet he's protecting his face. He's used to that. No Mm -hmm, one protects mm -hmm. the throat. That nobody protects the throat. He went. He went for his genitals. He went for his chest. Because you know his chest. (laughs) Well, yeah. He wants to protect those genitals. He protected those genitals for sure. Ever since that time that ever uh, since that that motherfucking time that damn agent grabbed his uh, whatever. Uh, (laughs) So he just goes right for those. He he leaves his throat open. And then he protects his chest because he knows those are insured for two million dollars. Oh yeah. Okay. He does the dance. So he started doing the Michael Jackson like hee hee whenever he's protecting himself. He's He's doing a lot of padding of his chest and his genitals, (laughs) and he's leaving that throat wide open, Scott. He never saw me coming. So you got him. I got him. So Terry Crews is now, uh, I guess he's like the, I guess he said, I don't remember. Yeah, what, what does I, he have to do? Because you have to switch with You him. know what? Because of my rehab, he gets to just walk free and do it. He gets to continue to be Terry Crews. He gets to roam the earth free? That's He gets to roam the earth forever. Oh Which my is, goodness. Forever? Forever? Damn, did I just... So now he's immortal. Yeah, I, yeah. You were you used to be roaming the earth forever. Yeah. Okay. I, I, okay. You know what, Scott? I just forget everything I just said. Okay. So we, this is not complicated. <laughs> None of that. This is not. This is a very simple premise. This for you. is very simple. Hey, Here Scott, why don't you ask me questions about my life? Oh, okay. So uh, where do you live? I've I've never figured that out, Rudy. Okay. I mean, close enough mm-hmm. to slap me. Yes, I do live close enough to slap you. I do live in Silver Lake. Okay, it's kind of boring, but all right. All Silver right. Lake. Uh, Silver Lake, yes. I live in this. I live below the Silver Lake. What? <laughs> below it? Yeah, yeah. I have a facility. Not even down in there. it underwater. You live no, below no, it? No, 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 no. You know, you know that one door you see right up, like on that yeah. weird. I get in that door, go in the elevator, submerge 20, 20 floors, and then that's my three story apartment. Oh, oh, so you have like a James Bond villain style lair under the Silver Lake? That's right, Scott. And some people are like, is he the villain or is he the hero? He's kind of an anti-hero. <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is so God, complicated. I think I'm relapsing. Point. This is why I thought I yeah. should I should come on the show, Scott. Do we need to call the cake boss? <laughs> I mean, look, I, don't, I know that he's a busy man. He makes a lot of cakes. <laughs> but I, I just say, I, I don't know, Scott. I feel like I could probably get through the show. I think it's okay. You know, it, it will be fine. All Maybe right. It'll I think, but if, if it gets too bad, we may have to call the cake boss. So we'll we'll see about this. <sighs> okay, Scott. Uh, okay, whatever, Scott. I, I'm a normal guy. I'm wearing a shirt. I'm wearing pants. I punch Terry Crews in the throat to take his job as a Zoom security guard. Right. And and also, I live under the Silver Lake. But that is it. And my arm okay. stretch like Kamala There's nothing Khan. else. That's There's it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. Should I ask you any other question? What did you do yesterday? What did I do yesterday? Good question. Um, I, um, I did a puzzle, Scott. Okay, a puzzle. That's. I mean, those are fun, especially during quarantine. It's yeah, fun to do a yeah. puzzle. I, I did mean, a puzzle. That's right. Okay. Kind of boring, though. I gotta no, say, there's okay. not a lot. Not a, <laughs> it is you boring, know, isn't I mean, it? that's there's got to be more to the story, right? It was made of skin. What? Oh, the puzzle was made of skin. Human skin. I was putting back together the back of a of with a map, a water world map. That's right. It was skin. Wait, oh, a water Scott. world map? <laughs> what? I'm fucking freaking out, Scott. <laughs> I'm losing it, man. What is? Look, so, wait, I, I think I've seen the movie Water World. There mm-hmm. was uh, there was a map uh, on on human skin, or there's on... a map on somebody's back that gets to dry land, Scott. Oh, okay. You haven't been to the Water World show at Universal Studios? They, yeah, they, surprisingly, they do not cover it. We've talked about it many times on this show. Scott, I, can, have we talked about it? Because I have a lot to say about it. No, wait, you and I have not talked about it. Please, I'd like to hear about okay, it. Okay, so first of all, I love the use of jet skis in a stunt. You know, it really elevates a stunt because you know, normally when I used to go to Universal Studios mm-hmm. as a young child, mm-hmm. you had the Wild West stunt show and maybe someone would be on a horse, but then that got too dangerous. So it's right. just like guys falling off roofs. Yeah, falling off roofs onto like 10 mattresses. It's like, I see the mattresses, bitch. But when it's but when it is a jet ski, Scott, they could submerge underwater. They could do anything they want, Scott. Wow, this is fun to just talk about normal guy stuff. Yeah, what else about the uh, what else about the uh, 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 Waterworld stunt show? Um, let's see. What else about the Waterworld stunt show? Well, I think that I really like the end when they say like, "Hey, I was on Law and Order last week." Isn't that fun? 
Wait, who was on Law and Order at the stud <laughs> show? Like the, the like the star of the stud show is always like, "Hey, I was on Law and Order, and she, she is very oh, hey, man, oh check yeah, me yeah. out next week." They Wait, do, do they plugs say that? The they do plugs at the end. Scott. I've seen it's this really so many fun. times, and I don't remember them you actually. Go ever. Back. Oh, we we got to go, go back. back. We've they got to. Bl- this is like the island. <laughs> It's kind of like Scott. It's like kind of like uh, uh, John. What's his name? Wait, who are we talking? Scott or John? <laughs> John Legend. Scott no, Joplin. No, 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 no. <laughs> These are my like two Jack best guests. It's kind of like Jack. Oh, Jack. Season, yes, of course. Yeah. Wait, what's his, what's, what's his actual name, though? Oh, that's a good question. The actor's Party name? Of five guy. Party of five. Matthew Fox. Matthew Fox. How can we forget? How he's Foxy forget? and he's a fox. Oh, Matthew, you know, Matthew Fox is my next door neighbor. Oh, that. What? This is the craziest part of your canon ever. Okay, I live next to Matthew Fox. We talk about Lost all the time. Uh, you, what do you talk about Lost with him Scott, for? Scott, I've been here 20 minutes, and so my canon is already getting away from it's me, a, man. This is crazy. I mean, it's no Speed Force. and no, <laughs> it's no Speed Force Thanksgiving. I mean, at least it's Earthbound. And, um, a lot <laughs> sure, of yeah. Living, I mean, you know, you live in Silver Lake. Wait, but you're next. So that means Matthew mm-hmm. Fox has an underground lair as well? <sighs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Because he's next to how big is his place? You have three floors. I have three floors, which is kind of like decadent to me, Scott. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's decadent for anyone. It's just me, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, look, if you lived in a townhome, I could understand having two floors. What's the difference between a townhome and a home, Scott? Well, I guess stairs. I don't know. Maybe (laughs) just a second level. Interesting. (laughs) To be honest, I can't really remember. You know, though. I saw this uh, a quaint little tutor in Ooh, uh, in Silver Lake houses, recently. Scott? Speaking of Silver Lake, three point eight million. Can you believe it? Oh, Scott, the the, uh, press, the a, a three crazy. bedroom tutor. I'll tell you what, Scott. There's a house down the street from me that's sort of a modern um, uh, mountainside lair, if you would. Oh, okay. Ma- under <laughs> mountain lair, I would imagine. Under, it's under. It's one point two, Scott. Not that bad. One point two for under a mountain, though. No view. Scott, you been on Redfin? <laughs> Wait, what are you going to say about Redfin? This isn't going to complicate your canon, is it? Oh, uh, uh, I did all the programming for the Redfin website. I don't know why I even said that. Why would you? Ad- is it true? Yes. Is all this Scott. stuff you're saying true, Scott? As soon as I say it, it becomes true. Wait a minute. You have the power. Mm-hmm. To just say something and it and it actually comes into being. That's right. I'm like Rob Schneider at Surf Ninjas, Scott. <laughs> oh, that's right. I saw that movie. You did? <laughs> yeah, I saw it with a friend of mine. Did you like it? I've been quarantining with him. <laughs> Who's this friend? Uh, yeah, you don't need to know about. It. You okay, get jealous. Right. He's yeah, probably annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's probably oh. annoying as hell. This is, Ooh, I mean, Scott. this is a, this is a lot. I feel like you're back. I feel like you're backsliding. I am Scott and, and, um, it's okay. You know, I'll just, I'll, I'll probably, I'll just te- text him with the cake boss a little bit. See what he says. I texted him. He said cake boss right away. So that's something. So, well, okay. that's, I mean, that's a good sign. That's a good sign, but I'll see if he can answer back, but everything's going to be fine. Scott, I think it'll be fine. I'm, I'm strong. You know? Okay. So uh, let's just talk about, you know, let's have a normal conversation about things okay. that you've done. Okay. Uh, what are your plans for, uh, the weekend coming up. Okay. Okay. I am going to watch the NBA playoffs, Scott. The NBA playoffs. And those are still going on. Those uh, are still going on. In the on. weekend of September 26th. Probably. We might be. <laughs> yeah. We might be. Okay. And, so you're um, going to watch the NBA playoffs. That's I might nice. play That's in the playoffs, normal. Scott. I might play in the playoffs. You're going to play in the playoffs? This, wait, wait. Because wait. I can jump really high, Scott. No, you can't. You can? This okay, is too so complicated. I was, Rudy. I was, I said the NBA, and then I thought all of a sudden, you know, things could be simple. Yeah, hey, what are you, some sort of like Air Bud kind of? Yeah, there's nothing in the rules that said a fan can't play in the game. <laughs> this is too complicated, Rudy. You got to get help. You got to get help. You got to call your sponsor. Should I call my sponsor? Yeah, call your sponsor. Can all right, you? I'm gonna call, I'll call my sponsor. Let me get him on the line. This is really powerful stuff, Scott. I hope if anyone's struggling with canon addiction, this this helps. So, okay. I'm going to call the cake boss. All right, here we go. Rang, ring. Boop, 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 boop. Bring, 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 bring. Cake boss. Okay, uh, hey, ca- oh, hey uh, boss. Uh, cake boss. Cake um, boss. <laughs> look, um, it's Rudy. Um, this is Rudy North. Rudy cake boss. North. That's right. Why are you and, calling um, me, Cake Boss? Why are you calling me? I'm in the middle of making cakes. I don't. I, look, I, I remember that you're my sponsor, and um, 
I, I've been creating canon at a. He knows a all rate. this. He knows oh, all this. In the background. Oh, Scott this is Ackerman. Scott Ackerman. Ah, you remember? <laughs> yeah, you remember me. Y'all know me. Y'all know Scott Ackerman. <laughs> you. Uh, when was the last time we saw each other? I was. I was thinking it was in 2019. Uh, Are you talking I have. <laughs> Hey, Robert yeah. De Niro. Is he here? <laughs> no, no, oh, what do you want? I want to meet him. <laughs> hey, here. Cake Boss, I know cake you. Boss. Oh, He's I'm going to meet the Fokker's cake. <laughs> I know things. <laughs> okay, I, okay. I made, I made a cake where Ben Stiller is milking Robert De Niro based on <laughs> the first... <laughs> <laughs> and it movie. says you and it says yes greg you can be milk that's <laughs> right it, it's written out in icing <laughs> Wait, okay, have you eaten any of that one <laughs> look here's the thing um that was just such a wonderful anecdote and i know it's because you keep your canon simple and um my canon to... is very simple <laughs> i was bit by a cake bug and gave me the gift of the second sight i can talk to any <laughs> <laughs> I can talk to any fictional character if it is reasonable to assume that they have passed on by now. I was bitten by a cake zombie one time. Uh, I was bitten by a cake scarab. Uh, I got a, I got a lot of. It's all very clean, very simple, very clear stuff. And we we never build on it any more than that. It always just remains just at that. That's right. And we we talked about how my. My simple canon could just be I'm a dirtbag who punches people in the throat and takes their jobs. That's right. And I go from job to job. Yeah, within five minutes, though, suddenly (sighs) Rudy North is living in an underground lair under the Silver Lake next to Matthew Fox. Rudy, Rudy. Rudy. (laughs) I'm sorry, Cake Boss. Why, Cake Boss? Why didn't you come to me when you had these feet, when you had these urges to add to your canon? Why didn't you call me? I wanted to be brave, Cake Boss. I thought that I should. I should come on the show and just prove to myself that I am I am canon free. I could just be a person. You, you can't know? look, Rudy. You can't white knuckle this. We've discussed this at the meetings. You're right. You're right. You, when you right. you're feeling weak, you get you can't just like uh put, try to push through all the time. You gotta you gotta admire. What's the first step? The first step is acceptance. <laughs> Okay, and what's the second? <laughs> That's not even the first step of Dabda. <laughs> no, 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 no. The first step <laughs> That's is the six. last one. <laughs> no, you accept that you have a problem. Scott well, there's, 50, there's 52 okay. steps, Scott. There's 52 I mean, this is steps. 52. We're going to go through so. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> there's acceptance, then there's self actualization. That's right. And then there is denial. Denial, yeah. And then there's an important step. It's a very important step in recovery. (laughs) And then there's (laughs) reacceptance. The third step is denial. (laughs) So you accept you have a problem, you self actualize, you say, I can't do it. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of people quit after that step I would imagine then, yeah. yeah well that's that's what separates the wheat from the chaff the fondant from the the, the treasure from the frosting oh, oh I got a good it metaphor. I got it Scott Oxman don't worry sorry sorry I got my cake terms cake terms of course step four is relapse <laughs> yes that's right step five is denial Yes, you back to denial. Denial part two. I feel like every other step is going to be denial because we have to do 52 of these. You don't have it all figured out, Scott Oxum, and the denials are sprinkled. <laughs> They're sprinkled Literally in. throughout the 52 steps. <laughs> Hey, there, this, am I doing? Am I doing me right? Is this what I, feel like? I, think, I think your canon is very clean. It's, of course it's you are. A long, it's been a long time. <laughs> I feel like my muscle memory is not responding as well as I thought it was. Maybe you got to stand up and shake it off a little. Bit. <laughs> Cake Boss, your your canon. I think you might be Cake canon off. relapsing yourself, Cake Boss. Cake Boss, I might be relapsing. Saying, uh, I'm on step 50, 50 so okay. uh, I'm due for a relapse. Okay. <laughs> yeah, step 51, a relapse? <laughs> what are you doing right now, Cake Boss? You said cake you were boss. making a cake? I'm just here making a cake. You know, no one's helping me, of course. Uh, of I'm course. under a crushing deadline, as always. And what's the, the worst part? There's a cake cricket in the kitchen. He's making oh, all this noise no. with his legs. And the worst thing about cake, it, uh, cake cricket, they can bite you. Anyway, ow! Oh no! He got bit by a cake he got cricket. Bit by I a cake bit cricket. Bit by a cake cricket, and I think I'm relapsing. I'm adding to my cannon. Oh no! Oh, you no. added a cake are, cricket to your cannon. Are, that is. That is there go. any sort of power coming upon you at all? Uh, I, yeah, I, I have the ability to to make. <laughs> 
makes to rub my legs together and, and create songs by the b- band Cake. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. okay. Interesting. That's interesting. It's, it's, I mean, if you like the band, that's fine. I, oh, God. Cake Boss, I feel Cake like boss. I feel like I've I've infected you with my disease, and I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. and I blame myself. No, I should have no. called you. Rudy, no, no, no. Don't, don't you feel bad. It's good you called me. I'm just working the steps, that's all. Okay, yeah, okay. you guys are both backsliding. This is uh, uh, an unfortunate situation, but uh, mm. I tell you what, uh, you know, we need to take a break. But, I don't care. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know yeah, you don't. Know. What, what does that mean to me? I just got a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I know well, you're doing care, a, but Cake Boss. We're actually Cake doing Boss. one of the. We're doing a podcast. We're doing comedy bang bang. What? No. Yeah, God, I'm sorry. You tricked me. I will forget this. I'm sorry, but uh, tell you what, uh, uh, Cake Boss. Why don't Cake uh, Boss. You, why don't you rub your legs together and take us to break here? Uh, oh, what do you sure. say? Uh, here we go. Ready? Uh, let's. Here you go. All right, we need to take a break. There we go. <laughs> we'll we'll see you after the break. We'll be this right back. Hard work. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm Nagin Farsad, and I host the podcast Fake the Nation, where we talk about news, we talk about politics, and where we keep you informed while laughing through the pain. It's a weekly news podcast that stays on top of current events, but it doesn't leave you crying by the end of the episode. Every week, I invite some of my favorite comedians on the show, people like John Hodgman, W. Kamau Bell, Robin Thede, Judah Friedlander, John Lovett, Bear Day Thurston. You get the point. Look out for a new episode of Fake the Nation every Thursday. Uh, listen and subscribe to Fake the Nation on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. Starting September 15th, Spanish Aki Presents is celebrating Latinx Heritage Month. SAP is going to be highlighting some of these amazing, exciting guests that are also Latinx. We are going to kick it off with the first Disney Latina princess, Amy Carrero. That's right. And we have showrunner of One Day at a Time, Gloria Calderon Kellett. And... Showrunner of Vida, Tanya Saracho. Yeah, and also we picked this super badass Latina, Patty Delgado, who has a Latina company called Hija de tu Madre. Oh, yeah. That's right. And we will also feature amazing poet Jessica Salgado. And some other very exciting guests. ETC. Yeah. E-D-D. All of that and more on Spanish Like You Present. So big things, big things. Starting September 15th, Dale. Comedy Bang Bang, we are back. Uh, We have Rudy North, who uh, is, uh, we want to stress, just a simple guy, just a simple dirtbag. You're just a simple guy. Just a simple dirtbag who throat punches people, swaps jobs with them. He's a Zoom security guard. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. Apparently was not doing his job when uh, the cake boss called in. I did not (laughs) see him come in. I was reeling. The open door policy Faulted me once again, Scott. <laughs> but we have to get to our next guest, if that's okay. And I, I need you on point here. I need you at the ready. Now, you got to say, do they have consent to enter the Zoom? They have consent to enter the Zoom. But if okay. at any point I give you the signal. I'm going to uh, toss the ass out of here. Yeah, hell yeah, you are. All right. So uh, we've talked to him before. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, please welcome back to the show. I can't recall exactly where he comes from or what his job is, but uh, please welcome back Darren Matichek. Babblehead buoy, babblehead buoy. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> close like to Baba Bowie. We, yeah, I like we, that. We'll give That's you an exception for that. I got you um, slant rhyme, Scott. Hi, Darren. It's so good to see you. Yeah, thanks for the smooth entrance. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, you uh, le- remind me, your canon is very, very simple. You, uh, you are the owner and proprietor of a bobblehead museum. Where is it? The National Bobblehead Museum and Hall of Fame in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we talked to you before a couple of times, I believe. Yeah, or... a few times. And uh, how many bobbleheads do you have? You have in the hundreds, I believe. Uh, in the thousands, Scott. Over seven thousand bobbleheads <laughs> currently in the museum and Hall of Fame, and there's uh, two that are in that overlap in the Hall of Fame and museum: Pete Rose bobblehead and now Dr. Fauci bobblehead. <laughs> oh, okay. They're they're <laughs> they're That's a new one. That's Dr. Fauci's new. Dr. Fauci. Uh, we have eight different kinds of Dr. Fauci. The most recent one is Dr. Fauci under anesthesia as CDC changes its <laughs> guidelines. 
<laughs> and is he, uh, have you arranged him next to Pete Rose where he's like treating Pete Rose or is Pete Rose sliding into him or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. Pete Rose is sliding into him saying, I'm not sliding into you. And Dr. Fauci is like, actually you are. Those are the facts. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing display. Do you? I, I don't know if we ever asked you this uh, one of your last times you were on, but do you display them in any way other than just standing them side by side? Do you arrange them in dioramas of any sort? Uh, yeah, we lay them all down and we smash them, Scott. What? No, they're in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> alphabetical by what? Uh, by description of them? <laughs> yeah, by description of them. So <laughs> Dr. Fauci is under D for doctor. Uh, okay. Pete What's Rose, Pete Rose under? He's under D, S. D for disgraced? Yeah, he's under D for disgraced <laughs> shithead. <laughs> and, and he's also under F for flat top. Oh, okay. So you had to buy a second one. <laughs> yeah, he's Cincinnati Reds Pete Rose with a flat top. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, so uh, how's the Bobblehead Museum been going? Uh, a lot of people have been sending me links to uh, your museum recently. Uh, uh, they've been sending them to a friend of mine as well. How's the, what's been going on? I mean, obviously the quarantine, have you been shut down or uh, have you been, I can only imagine it's the type of museum that one person could come in at a time, wear a mask and then leave. Um, have you ever had more than one person there? Uh no, there's so I'll either myself or one of the other co-owners uh, right now. Who you are know, the other we, co-owners again? Uh, they're my friends. They're guys, Phil, Pete, Steve. Oh, the guys. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's so simple and good. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said like, I would have said something crazy. All right. Sorry. Good. It but it's more, not Pete Rose, is it? No, it's and not Phil Pete Jackson. Uh, uh, no, it's Pete Rose Jr. <laughs> Steve Kerr. <laughs> oh, it's Pete Rose Jr. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No wonder his dad's in the Hall of Fame. P. Rose Jr., Steve Curse. <laughs> I forget what the other guy's name is. I don't want to complicate my canon too much. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah. last names. That's and, a good idea. Anyway, so we've opened, we, we temporarily shut down for um, coronavirus, COVID-19. Okay, and then good. we reopened with a harness system where one guest is allowed in at a time on the six-foot harness from the guide. <laughs> Oh, okay. Being being pulled by the guide or or pushed or yeah, we lay them on the ground and then we drag them through the museum. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> like a horse, like one of the Budweiser Clydesdales. Yeah, but imagine someone was riding the Budweiser Clydesdale, fell off, but their foot was stuck to the Clydesdale. <laughs> sure, like in old westerns where suddenly they're dragged. Yeah, exactly. And that's then... a good stunt. I saw that at the Universal Stunt Show, Rudy. That that sounds pretty fun. I mean, they should look, do they... that by a jet ski in the in the Waterworld one. Oh, so. Somebody just drag them like by the back of a jet. Oh my god, that would be tight. I would go. I, hell, I would. I would risk COVID to go back to see that. Same. It's outdoors. You can see it. It's outdoors. outdoors. Yeah, it's fine. Do you ever? You ever thought about doing a stunt show at your uh, uh, bobblehead museum? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the, the how the stunt would go is that we would dress as a life size bobblehead, and okay. we would be nodding. So, so you and and Phil and Steve and and Pete would uh -huh. dress as one bobblehead. Yeah, we dress as one huge bobblehead, <laughs> standing on top of each other's shoulders, okay. and then people would be like, "That's weird." There's three other points on this bobblehead that are also nodding. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd have to coordinate with each other and say, "Hey, you guys down there, stop nodding. We need, yeah. we just need support." Yeah. So we did a trial run, but we were unable to get all of us to stop nodding. So we, <laughs> oh no, we eighty sixed it. That's too bad. So the the only stunt was nodding. Yeah, that was the, well, and how tall the this bobblehead was. That's not really a stunt, you know. Like my friend who's six eight, it's not a stunt. You know what I mean? It's just his existence. <laughs> it is to anyone under six eight. Look at this <laughs> stunt man. <laughs> So uh, admissions are, are okay then now? Yeah, admissions are good. We've kind of opened up what the Museum and Bobblehead Hall of Fame uh, offer. We offer custom bobbleheads now. Oh, so you can of upload the people? Of yourself. You could upload pictures of yourself or a friend if you want to punk your friend with a bobblehead. That's not really punking someone. It's actually yeah, a nice gift. How do you punk gift? somebody with a bobblehead? This sounds like a fun, thoughtful gift. Well, not if you get bad pictures of them and then they get a bobblehead. Oh, okay. Because a lot of people are like, we'll get the custom orders. And you're like, this guy looks like a fucking idiot. <laughs> and then you make the bobblehead. Do you tell him that? Do you, do, you, do you call him back and say, Excuse, I just want to make sure you guys want this because this guy looks like a fucking idiot. Do you say that? I always, or do you just do whatever? I cover the phone where I'm looking through. <laughs> All right, I got your order, sir. 
this guy looks like a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, usually bad pictures of me, it's, uh, I, I don't like my body, but so I would actually prefer a bobblehead type body on my real body. So I don't know if I would be punked if I got a bobblehead. Well, maybe not. Sometimes the punk backfires. <laughs> How does it backfire? And someone's like, Hey, I look pretty good. I love my tiny body. <laughs> I, I love my curvy bobblehead body. <laughs> Um, so everything's that's a huge backfire, right? There. That's a huge punked backfire. You don't want a punk to backfire. You don't want a punk backfire because then you're the punk. You don't want to be like the canoe. That's a backwards punk backwards. Punked. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you. That's part of your canon. Knowing knowing what I'm talking about. No, don't Scott. Don't do that, man. Hey, man. <laughs> don't be added to my canon. So, is there anything, uh, uh, Darren? Anything new to your canon? To my canon. Well, Canon, let me explain it uh, because uh, not everyone is a, uh, singularly attuned to it like Rudy. Uh, it's basically the details of your life that we know about. Uh, you know, I don't ask you everything about, you know, I don't ask complete biographical information of all of our guests. So maybe there's something that I haven't asked you about that uh, is of interest to our listeners. Yeah, um, I had to go to the hospital recently. Uh, to, oh, no. Just to make sure that I didn't have COVID-19. And... Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, I got diagnosed with a medium-sized penis, Scott. Oh, no. No, it's great. I thought it was tiny. The doctors were like, buddy, this is medium-sized. So this was a doctor uh, diagnosing you and not just someone there in the hospital. I don't know, but the guy had a ruler and a white coat on. (laughs) (laughs) And what is medium-sized to him? (laughs) To that guy? Yeah. I don't don't know. He was 6'8", so I might have a huge penis. Who knows? (laughs) This is just in the hallway. Uh-huh. You didn't need a room for this, did you? No, I was going for an MRI. I never even got it. <laughs> you were going first. You go there for a COVID test, and then suddenly they take you into the MRI room. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Uh, and but I, the far as I got was the hallway, and this guy in the white coat with a ruler in his hand stopped me, and he measured my <laughs> penis, and he said, "Looks good to me." And I said, "Oh, okay. Well, that's my cue to leave." Do you take any pictures or anything like that, just to for your uh-huh. file? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Not for my file. Oh, Darren, this ain't right, man. I feel like yeah. you were maybe tricked, man. This is not even a reverse punk. This is a real punk. This is punked. just a straight up punk. Maybe yeah. it was someone getting revenge because they got a bobblehead they thought they looked dumb in. Well, a couple days later, I did get a bobblehead of my own penis in the mail. <laughs> oh, no. How do okay, you make a bobblehead yeah. of your own penis? <laughs> what part bobbles? <laughs> uh, you guessed it. Usually it's the other way around. Someone's bobbling on your penis. <laughs> hey, this oh, is what man. happens when all guys are on the show. Yeah, when well, you ain't got any ladies on the show, yeah, Scott. This is a problem. Yeah, I don't know. This Sometimes this happens. This is a problem. Sometimes um, this happens with yeah, ladies. So I got, a, I got a bobblehead question, Machichek. Uh-huh. Um, is, there, is there right now the most... Do you have a new most expensive bobblehead? Uh, yeah, we have, uh, are all bob- this is, I'm going to tie into this question. Are all bobbleheads, do they all cost exactly the same and then they appreciate in value and one is now more expensive to rebuy or are bobbleheads expensive on their own when they're first released? Well, it depends. Well, it's all about supply and demand, Scott. Mm, so if you only neat. make one bobblehead, <laughs> it could be a bobblehead of like Kevin from the office and it would be expensive because they only, it's one of one. Yeah, but if you make 10,000 Michael Scott bobbleheads, they're not going to be as expensive because there's 10,000 of them. So so what I'm saying is is that the the manufacturer then prices it accordingly or are they all priced uh with suggested retail, you know, MRP of like 9.99 or whatever and then they appreciate in value to the collector. That's right. They all start at 9.99 and then they appreciate in value. <laughs> okay, that's pretty, pretty right. solid answer. That's why you got to get in early on these 9.99 bobbleheads. <laughs> Do you buy every bobblehead that's ever released? Yes. Yeah, what are the brand new bobbleheads you just bought? I bought a, a brand new bobblehead of Babe Ruth pointing to the center field wall. <laughs> why is that new? brand new? <laughs> It seems like they would have got that one in early. That one seems like it should be old, man. 
Uh, I got the bobblehead of Tom Cotton writing a New York Times op-ed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, 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 one that is, is pretty, definitely new. That is that's a couple weeks old, but still, wow. <laughs> Who is the audience for that? Who's buying a Tom Cotton? Man, that's, You'd be surprised. Maybe, maybe it's to punk people with it. Because yeah. he's a straight up punk. I, I don't know. It seemed like 38% of the people buying it were genuinely buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> pretty sad. Yeah. What are some of the other new ones? What like what's the absolute newest that you got? Mm-hmm. The absolute like, newest. Check check the boards right this second. Like yeah. what dropped this in the last chronologically? 10 chronologically. Uh, okay, yeah. it's going to take a couple of clicks, but uh, here we go. <laughs> sure. Okay, it looks like we just uh, got a bobblehead. It's still nine ninety nine, so it, you know it's mm-hmm. fresh on the market of uh, the character Nippy from episode three of The <laughs> Vow on HBO Max. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the, of episode three of The Vow. The documentary of, of Nexium? Yeah, yeah. So if you're not watching <laughs> okay. The Vow, that's going to go over your head. But if you are, that's probably the best <laughs> reference you've ever heard in your life. Could you put that next to a uh, <laughs> Smallville actress <laughs> bobblehead that you must have gotten about 10 or 12 years ago? Allie Mack or Kristen Creek? I, I think it's Allie Mack. <laughs> it's Allie Mack, definitely, because she was in Nexium. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's It's her initials that you see at first. And then when you look sideways at the genitals, it's Keith Rainier. <laughs> <laughs> this is so you're, you're really new... enjoying the vow. <laughs> well, I'm definitely caught up. <laughs> <laughs> this is a brand new bobblehead that is vow themed. Will there be other ones? You think? Yeah. Are there any cuties on Netflix bobbleheads? <laughs> Let's take a couple clicks through the website to see. <laughs> but you know what? I got to say, if Squarespace were involved in that website, there would only have to be like one click. Yeah, because the, yeah. you could get to, you could make things happen in one click. Yeah, Squarespace. yeah, exactly. That's true. Well, this is uh, some other website. Uh, this is GoDaddy. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Oh, so may, yeah, you know, cuties might be on there on GoDaddy. Uh <laughs> This is what happens when guys are on the show. This ain't, this ain't right, Scott. I, I'm shaking my damn head right now. Scott. We got to get more women on the show. That's, you know what, Scott? What if we were on hold a break? On. Wait, wait, Scott, hold on. What's what if up? I was a woman? Uh, I don't I don't think it's cool for you to say that. Is that, you're is that bad, Gary? You're not a woman? Yeah. Yeah. That I think, let's keep that canon. out of your canon. Yeah, let's. You let's... sure? Because I could be just, I could be, a, I could just straight up represent the female voice on the show. Uh, like I, just... I think female people should play female people on this show, probably. Okay, you just keep okay, Scott, okay. Yeah. I respect that. That's it. I respect that. Not on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> probably oh, my bad. Right. But who knows who I may have invited to be on this show who That's true. That's didn't true. show up. We don't even know. We don't even even know it's not now, your fault i, I want to get some of these nexium bobbleheads man. yeah definitely absolutely so you want are you more into vanguard bobblehead or prefect <laughs> bobblehead i'll take a vanguard <laughs> smart move <laughs> <laughs> so what is, so then what is the bobblehead that is appreciated in value the most to the collector what is the most expensive one the most expensive bobblehead so this is you mean like a bobblehead i, we, I cannot go over this again <laughs> This is the bobblehead that's worth the most. All right, but just so that I'm clear on this. No, no, you're clear. I know you're clear on this. What would you, what, what, if someone were to walk into your museum right now and be dragged in, like they're on, like they've fallen off a horse and they look around and say, I want to buy the most expensive, which bobblehead would you sell to me for the most money? Which one would it be? Oof. Okay. Well, you know, they're going up and down all the time. So I'm going to sure, have to sure, of course they are. Clicks into the website. <laughs> so you, this is not a, based on a personal feeling. This is, this is like there's almost a, a buyer's price guide there on yep. the website. Yep. It's like the well, Thomas Guide of Bobbleheads. Yeah. Yes. Remember the Thomas Guide? <laughs> Nope. I don't even know. I don't. That, that was what cars were on. That was what what how you would figure out how much a I used car was. was Kelly, I thought that was Kelly Kelly's, Kelly's blue, book? blue book. No Maybe wait, no. Different. Hold on, Thomas guides. Thomas, Thomas guides are maps. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Thomas guides are maps. I don't know what. Okay, what about. am I thinking of? I'm thinking You're of, thinking uh, of Kelly I'm thinking blue of book, the penny baby. saver. <laughs> You're thinking of Auto Trader or the Kelly Blue. These are all things that I had to use until the internet was invented, circa 1998. Well, I am. Are you on this website yet? (laughs) Yeah, I've been clicking the way. You're talking about (laughs) Kelly's Blue Books. You got to answer the question, Matichek, because Scott's getting pissed. I might have to throw your ass out of the Zoom. No, get ready. Get ready, Rudy. All right. I consent to be here, but okay. So currently, the most expensive bobblehead 
is a bobblehead of the character Car Fox from the commercials. <laughs> from the Car Fox commercials? <laughs> from the Car Fox commercials. It is a bobblehead of the cartoon character Car Fox holding a Red Bull and vodka. <laughs> oh, so this is like, uh, this is a variant. Yeah, that's, well, yeah, most bobbleheads are, they have to place the character in some historical context. So the historical hmm. context for this. So one, standing and, next to Abraham Lincoln or something? <laughs> <laughs> Let me Like, how this. old is Abraham Lincoln's corpse compared to the Car Fox guy? So you must know about this one, and you set me up for this question. Because <laughs> in the paragraph description below this, there's only one of these made in history, which is why it's so expensive. Hmm. It's Car Fox drinking a Red Bull and vodka uh, right next to the corpse of Abraham Simpson. <laughs> Abraham <laughs> Simpson? Oh, you know, my fault, Lincoln. <laughs> you know. Are you thinking of the Simpsons? Do they already do this on the Simpsons? The Simpsons did it. I don't, I don't know. If the Simpsons did it, I will throw your ass out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I need you to do. If anyone does a premise that's already throw been done on the Simpsons, throw them out. We can't afford that. We can't no, afford to be sued. I swear. Oh, fuck Abraham Lincoln. So he's sitting in the booth. <laughs> At the theater with Abraham Lincoln, John. Will- <laughs> He's sitting in the, they keep the. I've been to that theater. I didn't see his corpse there in the booth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a historical reimagination of Lincoln's assassination, <laughs> where the Car Fox is there drinking a Red Bull and vodka, and then he's got a thought bubble popping up outside his head that says Six Emperor Tear in this." <laughs> so this is the most. He doesn't understand one. Latin. <laughs> this right. is the most expensive one, this is the and most it's expensive it's one. misquoted Latin. Uh huh. Six Emperor Tyrannus. I don't understand the bobblehead game. To yeah, me. yeah. With thought bubbles inside, I didn't realize there were thought bubbles and there were duo <laughs> Does things. Is the bubble and... bobble? Is it a bobbly bubble? Yeah, yeah. It's attached to the head and it moves. It moves as the head moves. So it's hard to read bubble. then. Yeah, that's why this one is so expensive because it shouldn't have been. <laughs> that's made. why it's expensive. Difficult. <laughs> it shouldn't have been would... made. <laughs> okay, it should right. have been made, but uh, this is. I don't get the problem. I thought maybe the most expensive, the one you described about Babe Ruth pointing the, pointing the bat it, for the home run. I feel like that one might be the most expensive. Yeah, one. yeah. I mean, if they made it back in nineteen, when did he do that? Nineteen thirty-two. Nineteen thirty-two World <laughs> Series shit, who cares? Uh, against Charlie Ruth and the Chicago Cubs, and they swept them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. They did cool. four to zero. Oh, great. Okay, we don't care. We did. This may be important to you. I thought this was a show about things that people care about. <laughs> <laughs> things that I care about. Oh, yeah, you got to make sure you it's, it's, it's got to be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which now I guess I care about slightly, yeah. although I can't Huge remember fan. any of the details. Oh, we did just get a Donatello bobblehead. For real. Wait, Donatello, which one is he? He's He's got, well, you know. No, I don't. Which what, what color mask does he have? Scott, purple. Purple. Come on, man. <laughs> what, what do you care, Rudy? I, I don't really care, but I can see your roommate behind you sort of waving his hands just like, yeah, I can't he, believe he's it. bummed. He's pissed. Yeah. Get out. You're not on today's show. Get out of here. I, just get it right, Scott. So you go, just have to say, Donatello does what, Scott? I don't know. I can't remember. Come on, man. You're going to get a you're going to get a he stretch arm slap. He just barged. Look, man, Scott Give Donatello him a, re- give him a reach machines, around. man. He's I'll not, give him a reach right. around. <laughs> Donatello does machines, Scott. Oh, is he doing machines in this bobblehead? Yeah, he's doing machines, uh, and he's cursing because there's so much pizza grease all over the machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, I think that would be That one's expensive. tight. Yeah, I'm, I, I, like that I'm, I would pay like maybe ten ninety five for that yeah, one. Yeah, I'd probably get $11 or something. All right, no, look, we shouldn't. have to take a break. Uh, what? Can, no, can you stick Scott. around, Darren? Yeah, please. <laughs> please, I want to stick around. I want to hear more from you, but we have an author coming up on the show, if that's okay. You got it. Thanks. Have God. you ever read a book? Yep. Okay. Asked and answered. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> I don't want to know which one. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we're back. We have Rudy North here. Uh, not Ooh. complicated at all. Just a normal nope. guy. Just uh, chill. What are you sitting on right now, by the way? Um, I'm sitting on a tuffet. <laughs> a tuffet? I hadn't heard of anyone sitting on a tuffet since <laughs> since the old. Yeah, okay, all right. okay. You know what? I'm sitting on a chair. It's just a normal chair. I'm a normal guy. Okay. And I'm doing Zoom security. And this Matichek guy seems to be okay for right now. He's so okay right now. I don't yeah. have to throw him out. All right. We also have Darren Matichek, the aforementioned Darren Matichek. He is uh, an entrepreneur. He and uh, his friends. You got Phil. You got Pete. Uh, I you believe got you also have Steve. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. Uh, they they all own and run the 
Bobblehead Museum out there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And uh, anything, any other side jobs or is that your only source of income? I'm an actuary. So I'm actually the money man behind all of this. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you put up, didn't we talk about this? You put up all of the money and your friends are just hangers on? Uh, yeah, they don't like that to be said publicly, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but well, they, we're just repeating what's already been said. Yeah, exactly. Hey, um, we, yeah. Hey, you said, hey, so I'm going to let you finish your thought. Oh, they come up with great ideas like dragging people through the museum to see. Uh, <laughs> Did they just say drag him one day and then you you took it to the next level or? Yeah, they, yeah, this guy, he snapped his fingers and he said, drag him, Darren. And I was like, oh, <laughs> drag customers through the museum. OK, that's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Well, we do need to get to our next guest. Uh, he is an author and uh, I don't know author of what author of books, author of uh, uh, novellas. We have no idea. But please welcome to the show, Jerry Major. Oh, it's on now. Oh, 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 it's it is on, on now. Oh, it is on. Yeah, I'll do. It's on now. You know, I come in hot. Oh, shit. You come in hot? Oh, I come I in hot. I come in hot. You're saying it's on now? Is this a hot off? <laughs> it's on. I'm hot. It might get to there. It might get to there. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay. I noticed the temperature rising about three degrees. <laughs> it ain't Sweating. surprising. Yeah, boy. Uh, hi, Jerry. It's so good. nice to meet you. You've never been on the show before? Never been on the show before, man. And, you know, can I tell you something? I took issue with you calling me an author because that's not what I do. But then I realized... It's kind of a compliment. Oh, it's not what I do. It's better than what I do. So oh, thank I'm sorry. you. Uh, that's okay. I'm sorry to get your details wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm just reading what's put on the card in front of uh, me by our producer, <laughs> the guy uh, with a chef apron. Yeah. Um, but you, uh, uh, what, what are you if not an author? You're something worse, you say? It's not as glamorous. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not. It don't have the glam. Okay. What I do is I, I look at a movie when Will Smith is attached to it. And I look at the script and I say, oh, that's a movie. But it's not a Will Smith movie. And what I do is I adjust the movie to make it a Will Smith movie. Okay, slow down. Hold on. Okay, hold on. This is it. Yeah, you, we may need kick boss in here. <laughs> yeah, we might need to. So he's already attached to the movie. That's right. Okay, so hold, somehow- on, hold on. You're a guy. So hold on. Hold on. You look at a thing and decided to movie? That was your first thing. <laughs> I look at a movie, okay? So let's okay, you say look at, Will you Smith. You look at a movie and decide it's a movie? So sometimes Will Smith will send me PDFs and I click on the PDF and I go, okay, this must be a movie. Okay, it's so about you, 120 you work for, to 200. You work for pages. Will Smith. Back up, back up. <laughs> You work for Will Smith. That's correct. Yeah, formerly the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, uh, right. current movie star. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, no one's a current movie star, but uh, is oh he, no, he is in he, movies right now. I trust that. Okay, okay. So you you're an employee of Will Smith. That's right. I work for Overbrook Entertainment. Okay, and what he does is he sends you PDFs of scripts that right. he is attached to, meaning he's he may actually film them and star in them. That's right. And you read them and decide if they're Will Smith movies or not. I make them into Will Smith movies when he wants to be in them. I look okay. at it and I go, well, here's some what, things, you know. Yeah, what are the adjustments it. that you need to make in order Sometimes to make them I'll Will Smith Sometimes I'll add explosions. Movie. I'll oh. add explosions. I'll add catchphrases. You know what I'm saying? So he was supposed to be in The Revenant. You know, oh, that, the, the Leonardo well. DiCaprio movie where he mm-hmm. won the Oscar for where he was uh, fucked in the ass by a bear, I believe. OK, so let's look at that scene. Right. I looked at that okay. scene and I said, okay. this is not a Will Smith scene if he doesn't get no. eaten by the bear. So I was thinking that when he gets eaten, or by was the he bear, eaten out by the bear? Is that what it was? The bears. No, he gets him. attacked by the bear. Mm-hmm. Oh, OK, I, I, there's a lot of sound and fury down there signifying nothing, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, so I couldn't quite tell what was going on down there. So he get an attack by the bear. And I was thinking to make it a Will Smith movie, he just go damn this bear hungry but they didn't <laughs> okay. want to do that they didn't want to do that so we walked away well it was a it was a period piece i don't know whether that it, it really fit in with the dialogue of the time if it don't fit in it's not a will smith movie it's that simple mm. Mm. yeah interesting so you sort of are you sort of make sure that the tone is right for your your client if you will so he's not misstepping and doing a movie he's more of a like, boss he's not a client <laughs> wouldn't you say i mean he's, hmm, he's me more yeah he's more like an how do you employer. get paid usually is he 1099 you <laughs> You know, I don't look your at tax your return. tax situation going on. <laughs> I have to just call send somebody. us your returns. That's one thing about comedy bang bang. Every just guest has to send your returns. tax returns. Oh, y'all we must have never have Donald Trump. <laughs> you don't shatter norms. Send us those. <laughs> <laughs> what? Let me ask you this. You said you had explosions. You had catchphrases. I I saw this movie called The Pursuit of Happiness. That's right. Yeah. Now, I remember for him then. I remember he was hanging out in a bathroom with a, a young kid. 
That sounds bad, but it, it actually was very He was very crying, sweet. and he was holding on to an old <laughs> piece of machinery or some shit. Scott, I wanted the bad version. You see, I was with you when I saw, oh, he's going to be in this bathroom with this young kid. I like this. I could see we could go we could go something crazy with this. But he didn't want to do it. He was feeling his Oscar self then, and we got into a big fight, and we didn't talk for some years. Oh, really? So every for years after The Pursuit of Happiness, you guys weren't talking? He was trying to be a serious actor. He wanted to leave the yeah. explosions and the catchphrases behind. You know what I'm saying? When did he come back? Was it with Bad Boys? It was after concussion, after he saw that. <laughs> oh, you're not the guy who said, tell the truth. Tell the no, truth. No, I would not, I would have said, hey, this truth seems hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. okay. Are all of your catchphrases based on the hunger of the protagonist <laughs> and what they encounter? I don't even <laughs> remember him really saying that. that Are you just hungry right now? <laughs> yeah, you When's the last time dying? you ate? I mean, I haven't eaten since I started working for the man. <laughs> oh, is he not paying you? No, he paid me. He paid me. I got to find those tax returns so I can send it to you guys. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll get those. Okay. I don't want my parts to be silent when the show's released. So right after concussion, let me let me take a look at his uh, IMDb page. Uh, you you got uh, what was the last thing? It's Suicide Squad was the next. Movie. Suicide Squad was the, oh yeah yeah he easy definitely job. easy job yeah. easy job. What did you add to Suicide Squad? Well, there was a scene right where he's talking to Harley Quinn. And Harley sure. Quinn's just like, oh, man, the joke is going to come after us. And he, he sits there and he thinks. And he goes, damn, the Joker must be hungry. And then an explosion <laughs> oh, happens. Oh, then explosion him. happens? Okay. Wow, you, that, did double, you doubled up on that one. Honestly, it sounds a lot like what happened in Suicide Squad. <laughs> I only saw it once, but that's kind of my memory. That's of, kind of a lateral move of, to uh, me. Of how bad it was. I love yeah. that. Uh, I, what about Bright? He made Bright right after that, oh, the Netflix film. On. About the cop with all the, uh, the magic in the world. Can I tell you something? It was just yeah. a regular cop. And black people movie, you know what I'm saying? Like the Ooh, the okay. orcs were the black people and the Hispanics mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. Okay. I'm the one who came in and said, "Yo, this shit's not this shit's not Will Smith enough." You know what I'm saying? Right. And I had a lot of trouble talking to Max, you know, because he thinks he's important because his daddy's somebody. But right. I told Max him, Landis, "Look, right. I do this, okay? I do this all the time." Did you get along them. with Max? You know what? <laughs> I did, but a lot of people did not. Oh, interesting. <laughs> So wait, you decided you got to make it a bunch of monsters just because Will Smith was in Men in Black or something? That's what I'm it? saying. I'm saying get up to his level. Okay, y'all don't know this, but Bad Boys was not written for Will Smith. Who was it written for? Danny John DeVito? John Lovitz and Danny DeVito. Whoa, <laughs> that's a pairing I actually want to see. Have they ever done a movie together? God, oh, now, now I'm hungry for Woo! that pairing. Man, that would be so tight. But and then, then I, Joe Pesci shows up. Oh, and then Joe no. Pesci shows up. He was He's a police. Salivating. He was a police chief and a bad guy. All right, here's what we do. We make something called Sad Boys, and we, yeah. we hire these old motherfuckers to make a movie. Mm. I want to make a movie now. All of a sudden, we got to be all hyped up. Man. That's, on, that's man. a Let's relatively simple thing for. Oh, it's on now. Oh, it's on now. Let's this. do it. Darren, you in? I got now. the money for it. I could back you guys. <laughs> I believe in your vision. <laughs> How you much just back things very yeah, How much money do you have? I'm an actuary. I have a lot of money. But for a John <laughs> Lovitz. Actuarial services. I, you know, I look at the market and analyze risk and then I make money off of it. <laughs> sure. Uh, but John Lovitz, Danny DeVito, Joe Pesci, zero risk. I'm in. <laughs> okay. All profit. All profit, baby. You turn it into a Will Smith movie. That's right. I got to yeah, know. Is you this going to be a Will Smith movie? Did you oh, strip out? Yeah, what did you strip out? I mean, I stripped out a lot of the dramatic tension, a lot of the <laughs> forward plot movement. You know, I took a lot of that out, and I just added catchphrases like that scene where they're in the in the corner store and they say, "Give me some bubblicious, the strawberry kind." That was me, mm -hmm. and some skittles, and some skittles. Thank you. So All Martin right. did that. I'm not gonna take credit mm -hmm. for that. That was Martin. I didn't. Oh, say does Martin have his own guy who oh. Martin finds movies? Ooh, you talking about Michael Miner? That oh, guy. Michael Miner. Michael Miner. <laughs> That's Martin's guy. He hasn't oh, worked in man. a bit. I'd love to talk. Yeah, no, unfortunately. Well, uh, you know, we got a big paycheck this year, I would think, for Bad oh, Boys yeah. 3. Oh, Bad yeah. Boys we worked life. together on Bad Boys 3. It felt like a, a, a family uh, a class reunion. Class reunion? Oh, I was going to say class reunion. but I don't uh, go to school. Those are, the, those are the two types of reunions, haven't you found? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Family class, Real Housewives. Yeah, that's true. Okay, the three, uh, yeah. the three reunions. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy Cohen is usually there in two out of the three. Two out of the three. 
Um, so what is, does Will Smith have any movies coming up? I mean, what what are you? Looks oh, like man. he has something called King Richard yeah, that he's currently I'm having, filming. I'm having fights with that one. I'm having fights yeah. with that one, man. I, I can only imagine it's a period piece where he plays King Richard. What, That's right. I mean, what's the dialogue like in that? It's very Shakespeare, which to me is boring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I, I well, speak the speech, work. I pray thee. Uh, comes trippingly off the tongue. Hey, Scott, man, you want people to listen to this, bro. So you should. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. Out, out, damn candle. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually Damn spot? reading Which one? I'm I'm reading the plot to this and maybe it was a period piece at some point but now it's a look at how tennis superstars Venus and Serena Williams became who they are after coaching from So their it father, used to be a Richard period Williams? piece that's, about King Richard and right. then you just added Serena and Venus? Bro, that's a Will Smith movie now cuz before it wasn't a Will Smith movie. So you what happens Venus to Serena and it's okay, a Will Smith I, movie. Okay, I'm pretending that I'm Venus Williams now and I hit the ball and it it it's uh it goes outside the line, ready? And you you tell me what Will Smith Says. Ready? Huh! Damn, she must be hungry. Okay, I kind of saw that yeah. coming. Yeah. I did not see that coming. <laughs> By the way, the whole must be hungry thing, does that tie into Danny DeVito's Snickers commercials? Because that's the whole premise of those. That's a lawsuit right now, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about it, though. Okay, I'm going to tell you all this a little bit. <laughs> all right. tell, us like, every- what tell us everything. Just tell, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you all the courthouse. It's that one over in Santa Monica that be looking real mm-hmm. nice, and you go, ooh, I could go to court and then get a little surfing afterwards. Ooh, I love that's that. the dream. That is the dream. Look, OJ did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Was he surfing every day during his trial? Did you know he had a wetsuit on under his suit? <laughs> had a what? wetsuit. That's why he looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> Is it the same wetsuit he wore in Naked Gun 33 and a third? Yes. Absolutely. That's why the glove didn't fit, because his body was swelling up through his hand. <laughs> oh. Oh, this is insane. Oh, shit, we broke the case. Oh, we broke the case, but we can't be saying any of this stuff. Yeah, we can't. We, we can't say this. Out. Yeah, we're they're gonna, gonna reverse the decision. Double jeopardy. Trust me, Kevin. I can trust you to cut all this out, right? Okay, he's nodding. So, uh, uh, yeah, what's what's coming up for Will Smith? I mean, other than King Richard, like, well, uh, what do you got in the pipeline? Well, you know, they really want us to do a movie about the civil rights movement. And oh, that would be great. Like a, maybe something based on uh, uh, he just passed away. Good trouble. Richard, uh, not Richard Lewis. John no. Lewis. <laughs> well, <laughs> Richard Lewis is going to be in my version because I want it to be a Will yeah. Smith movie. Hell yeah. No, hold on. Hold on. This, this is going right. to be tight. I love this. This ain't right. I'll That's... go see it if Richard Lewis is involved. So, you know, Richard Lewis? John Lewis Look. is having a tough time, you know, coming up with his speech. And he go, I need some jokes in this speech. And he dials up his good friend, Richie. This is the bridge you know. from hell. <laughs> Who's his cousin? You know what I'm saying? And oh, that this is, is good. That is going to be a bad movie. I Why is that going to be a bad movie? Why is that going to be a bad movie? It's like, it's like a reboot of Twins with Will Smith and Richard Lewis as yes. Richard and John Lewis. As Richard and John Lewis. They didn't know is, that and DeVito's bad. out. DeVito is out. What's this wrong has with this the, movie? This you know has what? The here's, what, here's what I'm excited about with Will Smith. I don't, I'm not excited about any of his movies. I'm done with him as a movie guy. Let me hear. I like him as a producer. Okay. And he's producing Bel Air. That's right. Which is the remake of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the dramatic remake. Oh, and I'm, I'm excited for that. And I feel like Will Smith is not going to be in it. It's not going to have a bunch of catchphrases. No. It's going to take the material seriously. He That's is. what I'm excited no, for. No, he is. Yeah. And I'm the showrunner for that. So you I, are. Oh, You're yeah. the showrunner. <laughs> That's a lot of work. A, he should be well, in I'm exhausted, right and he still has not fed me in all these years. Uh, Jerry, is he supposed to feed you or he's just giving you, here's what maybe you don't understand the paychecks he's giving you you're supposed to buy the food with those he but doesn't make actually, no sense that's not food that's money. no he doesn't actually feed you he doesn't actually like <laughs> pay you in food yeah let me ask you this right now Jerry if you were to say a catchphrase about yourself mm. and it would just describe take, something yeah taking about into account your emotional state, the fact that you haven't eaten in yeah. a long time. What would like your if this is the Jerry Major movie? Mm. What would your I would love to see be? Will Smith in the Jerry Major movie. Oh, That'd be great. oh that's a dream. That's a dream. Well, how do you man. make it into a Will Smith movie, Jerry? I'll go. Damn, that's a big ass explosion. No, that's <laughs> okay. You know what? I don't know what. to yeah, do. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Yeah, but can I tell you about my plans in Bel Air? 
Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Hey, look, I, you 100% right, my man. It's going to be very dramatic. We're taking it very seriously. You know what I mean? Young Will is being chased by gang members and is forced to move to Bel Air. You know yeah. what I mean? It's all Wait, this he's class being chased. Uh, by the way, I've never, I, I've never seen uh, The Fresh Prince of, of Bel Air. I've seen one episode because I, I did a Raise by TV episode. So that's the premise of this. He's being chased by gang members the entire show. That's not the premise of the television show. The television show, he gets into a fight while he's playing basketball. Oh, and okay. his mother sends him to Philadelphia, but we had to up the stakes because the drama. Okay, now. so he oh I see. So there's gangsters involved in every episode of this? Now chasing currently. him around? That's oh, correct. Damn. And what what kind of thing does he say? Ooh. Boy, this is I mean if this is your job. <laughs> so the fact the fact that you Can took I call that my question <laughs> Wait, you have a writer's room? He's got a writer's room running right now. He's a showrunner. He should be in the room. I took a break to work with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I took a break to work with y'all. Yeah, call your room if you have to. I mean, Darren, maybe you could get involved in this. Could you, uh, maybe you could punch Darren's my backer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm I'm a non-creative VP, but I'm full of ideas. (laughs) You're pretty good with catchphrases, aren't you, Darren? Although you've never had one yourself. Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, you just tell me what I need to brainstorm and I'm on it. We've well. Have you been listening the last three minutes? I was thinking of new bobbleheads. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, of course you were. I've I seen think- you clicking away on that mouse. <laughs> I was thinking of Richard Lewis bobbleheads. Uh, oh, this is good with a big trench coat. Yeah, because you know, a as we've discussed, a bad bobblehead can be one of the most expensive bobbleheads. That's so true. Richard Lewis drinking Boku fruit juice. Uh, involved in some civil rights movement. That's a bad bobblehead. This is a bad one. Very expensive. Very expensive. All right, so... Man, mark me down. I'm going to buy that bobblehead when you make it. If it's nine ninety nine, dollars just... I, I got to invest my money. So say say Will Smith was... Uh, uh, w- what's the situation? <laughs> Even I've lost the blood here. Oh, sorry. He's uh, being chased by gangsters? Yeah, we throw it out and come up with a new one every day. So I'll tell you what today's is. Okay. Uh, he's being chased by gangsters. And so he moves into Bel Air with his cousins and his uncle. His uncle is a judge. His aunt is easily replaceable. And his <laughs> and his cousins, you got Hillary, she rich. You got Carlton. And this is new. He's a Trump supporter. We thought oh, that, that was a big, okay. you know, a big Are you sure that you want to make him that unlikable? I mean, I know I know that uh, What's you unlikable know, about that? Uh nothing. Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, half unlikable. my audience is gone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, we can't 38%. Gaff again? 38%. <laughs> if we gaff again, we'll lose our audience. Oh, please, by the gods of Jim Gaffigan, please. Oh, please help us keep our audience. Please, oh, please, 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 please. Please, please, please. please. <laughs> make me big um well this sounds great so then what darren maticek what is the catchphrase here in this situation i don't know about you but i'm definitely the new chris paul <laughs> ah. okay let me let me okay. break that down I, like that. I don't know about you but like i'm definitely that. the new chris paul what what does that mean darren well uh alfonso ribiero who played carlton on the original is now in state farm commercials where he's That's pretending right. to be chris paul so Okay. You make that canon within the new Bel Air. What about the AFV canon, though? The America's Funniest Home Videos, because is he not the current host of that? I, yes. <laughs> it sounds like you don't know, and if you don't know, <laughs> this bobblehead might be worth nothing. Uh, yeah. I'm only watching The Vow right now. I'm not trying to watch America's Funniest Home Videos during a pandemic. <laughs> Slip in America's Funniest Home Videos during. I mean, it would lighten up The Vow. I would imagine. I can only think. That's for sure. Oh, um, well, what do you think? Uh, 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 what's your name, Jerry Major? <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm right now. I'm, per, I'm perplexed because AFV is an inaccurate acronym. Oh, uh, uh, what is it? Wait, uh, funny. Oh, AFHV. Sorry. That's correct. The, yeah, it's not just funniest videos. No, that could be anything. That, that could be, be anything. We could tape the Waterworld stunt show, you know, and that oh, would be funny. That's a funny video. <laughs> you know, but it's the funniest <laughs> home videos. You're right. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. You no, took, but that's you what it is take... on the title. That's not on you. Did you create the show, Scott? Oh, I I did not create the show, but I, I just thought I got it wrong. That is the title. A, a, what is it? AFV. That's what they put up on the screen sometime. They that's do. not on You're you. Right. That's not on me. That's not my fault. That's not my bad. That's not on anybody here, unless somebody here is the creator. Does your boss still talk to Alfonso? 
it's actually really sad, man. Oh no, what happened? Here we go. Because the uh the the reunion special's coming up in a few weeks on HBO Max. That's right. And I'm not here to promote that at all. But okay. you know, uh <laughs> So wait, what? Did you have to, Did you get involved in that? Did you have to give him catchphrases for that? Man, I had to give him so many. Can I tell y'all a secret? Y'all yeah. can't tell nobody this, and I hope that this isn't published in any form or shape. But okay, don't worry about that. Kevin's nodding. I was a young kid who was playing basketball one day, <gasps> and I did some stupid shit. And my mama said, "That's it. You move in with your auntie and your uncle in Bel Air." What? And then I whistled for a cab, and when it came near, it had what? some dice in the mirror. But if anything, you that sounds rare. Yeah. Your whole life was <laughs> turned, what is it, flipped uh, upside down? Flips upside down. You skip down. it ahead. You skip it ahead. Sorry. I, well, again, I've never seen it. That sounds rare. Well, I guess you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. Yeah. So, wait, this whole thing was based on you, and Will Smith stole it? I mean, he didn't steal it, okay? He said he was going to pay me. It just he probably it has. has. How much? Like, do you have? I, I'm looking at your desk right now. You have like just piles and piles of checks. Yeah, these are all these, these are envelopes probably like residual checks. I, I don't open the mail since Anthrax. Dude, he's paying anthrax. you. <laughs> That's old. He's paying you in checks. You you're probably a millionaire by now. You created the show Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and you haven't eaten. I haven't eaten. Uh, I'm just out here spinning out new ideas. You know what I'm saying? And I open and I up one of those checks. I just open a check. Open and read one it. check just and read it. Just I've always wanted to, to, check. to be involved like, in anything that got a check that big. It's green and it says Riders Guild of America on it. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's you. Yes. That I know that that is a good thing to see when you open a mailbox. By the way, a green check. You know that's Woo. that's when they're worth a lot of money. <laughs> Hell yeah, because they're green. Green bags. like money. They're, they're green like money. <laughs> What's it say? This says. One million dollars <laughs> from the pilot of Fresh Prince of Just from the pilot. Just from the pilot. Dude. That's what read for seasons. Uh, then they sold it to tearing HBO it up. Max. Tear, no, 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 no. Oh, my I don't God. even understand why you would tear it up. It don't make no sense. Yeah. <sighs> It makes sense, man. Jerry. You're hungry because you ain't cashing your damn checks, Jerry. I'm Jerry, hungry because be... Will Smith ain't feed me. Jerry, let me be your business manager, please. Sign all your checks over to me. Okay. I'll only take I'll only take ninety percent. Ninety? That's not bad. You That's not took bad. Hundred. Jerry, hold on, man. Oh, wait, 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 man. I can't. You can't be taking advantage of my homie like this, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, man. I just take these checks to the bank, deposit them in a bank account. Do you have a bank account? Uh, yeah, my my friend Scoot. He says that if I give him 50, he'll hold it for me. Okay. No, no, no. Jerry, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Scott, I think I might have a new <laughs> Don't throw a punch job. me with your no. stretch Armstrong. I'm his I don't have to manager. throw a punch anyone, Scott, because this job I'm creating on my own. You're a job creator? I am a job creator. Mm. I'm a small business. I will be your money manager, Jerry. I like this, man. I like this, bro. That's, and I will only that's take the job that I said I wanted. I How will are only you creating take a new job. Fifteen percent. Fifteen. Yeah, I'm that's a lot lower than guy. ninety. I like that. Damn, I'm undercutting well, you. I couldn't do less than eighty-seven. So you know, I'll throw this out there. I'm an actuary. I think I'm the only person here qualified to actually manage money for anybody. Probably. <laughs> I'll do it for one percent, and I'll invest the other ninety-nine in bobbleheads. Can we get some Will Smith bobbleheads? Absolutely. Do you we have only any have Will Smith bobbleheads? We only have one so far. Which? What's it from? <laughs> it's from I Am Legend, right at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> so the dog is still there. Yeah. Spoiler. The spoiler. <laughs> A lot of dogs in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What do you say? Who's who are you going to go with? The guy who will only take eighty-seven percent. The guy who's going to probably do a bad job for fifteen percent. Or the guy who's going to invest 99% of your money in bobbleheads. Now, can I be honest with y'all? Y'all are throwing money at me, and that doesn't make sense. Can we have a new set of pitches? Tell you what. Y'all tell me what you will feed me. I'll Mm -hmm. give you a sandwich Mm -hmm. for lunch, toast and coffee for breakfast. Ooh. Because you're in a hurry. Mm -hmm. I am always on (laughs) the go. And a nice seven-course meal for dinner. Seven course. We have uh, uh, secundi and <laughs> everything. Like uh, oh, he's going around the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything. So many courses. Okay, I'll do. I'll, I'll do I'll that every say. day, and you just give me all your money. 
Okay, I like. Okay, this. I'll give you two lasagnas, Ooh, a corn dog. This is the Garf. This is the Garfield diet. You don't want to be on the Garfield lasagna. diet. You had to do a the corn, corn dog. dog. You had to do the two corn packs dog. Of, two packs of gushers. Who are you, John? By the foot, but the good fruit by the foot from Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give you Chicago style popcorn mix. That's how you have to uh, eat popcorn. It has to be Chicago uh, style. Thin crust, a deep dish, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll give you one of those every single day with a yuhu and uh, six glasses of water. Okay, thank you. All right, Darren, what do you got? Eight glasses of water to start Shit. the day. Shit. To start the day? How long does that take him to? Uh, I don't know. How long does it take you to drink eight glasses of water? No, I'm just saying, question. when does he actually get any real food? Oh, well, that's just the way you start the day to make sure that you're hydrated. You drink eight glasses of water first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. Get it out of the way. <laughs> get it, And then you don't drink any water the rest of the day? Then I wait 10 minutes and I take the biggest pee of my life. <laughs> every day it's the biggest of your life so it increases every day every day always work on yourself scott <laughs> <laughs> then uh glucosamine tablets because we are oh, men of a certain age <laughs> uh, chewable gummy vitamins um uh chobani black cherry oh. the best the best flavor uh this sounds horrible Man, this continue sounds terrible. continue <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else? Get to the good stuff. Okay, coffee with a little half and half. <laughs> a little? Yeah. You're you're skimping on the half and half with him? How much do you want? You're half- trying to make a deal here, my man. <laughs> Look, as much as he wants. I think I'm staying consistent with my character by offering some bad things. <laughs> He's right. He's All right. right. Your cannon's not complicated. Simple cannon. Simple cannon. Simple cannon. <laughs> That's breakfast. Lunch is scrambled <laughs> eggs with an entire avocado smashed into them. For lunch. <laughs> Damn. I didn't think of that. And dinner is $15 for takeout. <laughs> Wait, so you're oh. giving him a per diem? <laughs> so I get to pick idea. what I want for dinner. That's right. I give you. We already know choice. you don't want to do this, so you're out. Yeah, are you like Mr. Wonderful? I'm sure you're out. Who are you going beto- to are you gonna pick between me and Rudy? I'm going to have to go with Rudy. Uh, Damn. Oh, yes. All those six millions. glasses of water to end the day. Six glasses you know of water. Because eight to start is a lot. That's a lot That's of time. Lot. But to end the day, you want to catch up on your dehydration. Day. Absolutely. All right. Well, Rudy, Ooh. you're a millionaire now, and that's canon, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. That's fine. We can just add that I'm a millionaire. Uh, that's no, not a big deal. It is a big deal. This is going to change your whole character. You don't need yeah. jobs. You don't need jobs anymore. I'm going to be independently wealthy from now on. I will no longer be talking about jobs. Uh, and that is my candidate. We need Ooh. to call Kick Boss again, maybe. But we don't maybe have time. We, we, we don't, don't have time. time. We, we, we only have one final feature on the show. And that is a little something called plugs. What's your nut? What? The nut? <laughs> your nut? What? <laughs> the nut. Our what nuts? Like, what's our nut? nut? Yeah, what's your nut? just don't want it asked that way. <laughs> nice. That was What's Your Nut by The Human Neighbor. That was, uh, I believe, me and uh, Mike O'Brien from a couple of weeks ago. All right, guys, what are we plugging here? Uh, Rudy, what do you got? Um, I'm pl- So I have a friend. His name is Sean Diston, and uh, he has a Patreon where I think you might be involved with this guy. Oh, I know that guy, Sean. I mean, mainly I know my roommate, Sprague the Whisperer. Mm-hmm. He's a guy who I guess has been... Uh, siphoning off talent of other people to do podcasts on his network. So he has a bad, he, he, I do a podcast where I'm looking for a job on his network. Hmm. And then Scott, apparently you're on there yeah, somehow. I, is that what it is? It's a network that he has. Yeah. Yeah. It's I guess I'm network. involved somehow. It's yeah. called the church of Sean Diston. Right. On Patreon. Yeah. I do this and show it, on there about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Sprague. With Sprague the Whisperer. That's right. And I see him in the background sort of shaking his head still from the He's Donatello. He's so thing. upset. He's so pissed that you don't know who Donatello is. So last week we released an episode with Tatiana Maslani and Christian Brune. Christian Brune. Both that's from right. Orphan Black, where we talked mm-hmm. about uh, the TMNT, TMNT cartoon. And then yeah, next and week we. I have- listened to that, and that movie. Not so good. Not but, but yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. Don't, don't spoil anything. To and then, and then, don't we have an episode coming up next week? We've got an episode coming up next week with this guy named Paul F. Tompkins. And I'm sure if he were here, he would plug this. This, this, this is the thing he'd plug want it. to plug. If he were here, he'd be like, I got something to plug. Uh, my appearance on a person's Patreon <laughs> named Sean Distin. 
Uh, but if you like he- talking about the Ninja Turtles, you like hearing Scott, if you like hearing voices similar to mine, <laughs> you might want to become a patron on my Patreon. I mean, oh, Sean, this is Patreon. Patreon. Yeah, okay, that's that's canon. It's Sean. That's Disney. canon. Okay, that's canon. Okay, all right, we got through it. Very good. Uh, Darren Medicek, what do you want to plug? I uh, plug all the normal things uh, that I usually plug when I'm on here. Uh, Righteous Gemstones <laughs> season one on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Uh, shrink on the NBC app, but uh, look forward at some point this fall to a short uh, feature called John Bronco. Um, it's about the. Uh, Is this about former- a guy who falls off the back of a horse and gets dragged? <laughs> it sounds like you're dragging me right now. <laughs> I don't want to give you any ideas. <laughs> it's about the former Ford pitchman named John Bronco that the car was named after. And, oh, that uh, sounds interesting. Maybe it's uh, starring Walton Goggins. So you okay, know, okay, yeah, getting better, getting better. Now I'm hungry. It's going to be great. It's also starring uh, <laughs> people like uh, Tim Meadows, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Dennis Quaid, the Veronica Mars writer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> dude is a he's a killer in the writers room. He's got a good job. He got a he on he on Bel Air. Good, good job. job. <laughs> you know, and that Tim Meadows guy, he's maybe my favorite Tim actor there is. Yep, of all he's, time, he's pretty agree. good. My second favorite Tim actor is in it too, a guy named Tim Baltz. What uh, the hell? Okay, yeah, but Tim Meadows is definitely top billing. Uh, <laughs> And as far as the Tims in the cast. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, uh, amazing. And uh, Jerry uh, Major, what do you want to plug? Yeah, you know, when I'm looking at these scripts and deciding if they're good for Will, I like to listen to this podcast called Culture Kings. So if you all oh. want to check that out. And then also this other podcast what is, called- What is Culture Kings? Tell us about it. What is What is it? You know, is these two guys that, you know, they like to talk about pop culture, you know, whether it be movies or TV shows. And then they bring on the, a, a famous guest and, you know, try their best to do an interview about pop culture with them. But they usually get in their own way. Ah, sounds good. And that's on the Earwolf Network, right? That or, is. Or anywhere podcasts are sold. Anywhere. And you're selling these, right? Oh, I sell them individually all the time. <laughs> yeah, good. And what? And a, sorry, no, I don't mean to interrupt you, but what else? Oh, do you no, want you didn't interrupt me at all. But, you know, check out Gemini Man. Uh, sure. Independence Day. But I, that, uh, did you get paid twice for Gemini Man? I did. Because there's two Will Smiths. There's two Will Smiths, and I got paid twice, and it was the best. It was the best paycheck I've, I've ever had in that the you've ever, never opened. <laughs> Wasn't there that really fun riff at the end about both of them being very hungry? That's right. And they was like, "No, I'm hungry. No, I'm hungry." No, and then one of them I'm just the eats hungry. the other one. Mm-hmm. That was a good. That's pitch. the dream. Spoiler alert. Um, all right, let's close up the old plug bag. You start with a C when you wanna close it up. You lead with an L and then you open up the plug bag. Open up the plug bag. Take your hands and open it up. Then Horatio comes and then he just says, Open up the plug bag. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much. Uh, Rudy, always great to see you. Uh, great to see you, too, I hope Scott. we can I keep it just good. at this level. I'm feeling good. Just to, to recap, previously on Comedy Bang Bang, I have my powers back. I'm working as a Zoom security guard, but I did get a new job as Jerry Miner's Jerry money Major, manager. Jerry Major. <laughs> Jerry Major's money Wait, manager. And it's not, by the way, you're not a parody of Jerry Miner. <laughs> you're not a parody of Jerry Miner. I Miner, could never right? parody a legend. All right, because one thing, one thing we know about Jerry Weiner is he loves money. That's just that's just a, a name that that your parents came up with, separate from him, independently, and had no bearing on Jerry Weiner. Absolutely not. All right, great All right, friend good. of the show. Uh, so now so, you yeah. are independently wealthy. You have millions and millions of dollars. I have millions of dollars. That is my canon. And that is what my canon will be. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. Uh, Darren Matichek, speaking of simple stuff, uh, 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 great to see you. Thanks for having <laughs> me stop by, Scott. Someday I'd love to drag you through the National Bobblehead Museum and Hall of Fame while I drink a beer. <laughs> I went, oh, that's part of it? You drink a beer during this? Yeah, usually. <laughs> It's tough work, so you got to unwind while it's happening, you know? It's thirsty work, but speaking of the opposite of thirsty, hungry, uh, Jerry Major, 
great to meet you. Continued success. Uh, I'm sorry we're not working together, but uh, it was it was certainly a pleasure having you on the show. I tried. I tried to get Will on that between two ferns movie that you did. Yeah, I bet you did, but we were we were so selective and would not let him be on it. <laughs> a lot of cutting room floor stuff. A lot stuff of cutting room Tom floor. Cruise and like, yeah, what would you have stars. done to like punch up the uh, like say uh Zach were to say one of his famous zingers about Will Smith, you know, uh mm. gosh, if I had to write one on the spot without looking at his <laughs> IMDb, it would be very hard, but oh, okay. Uh Men in Black. No, I don't want to say anything about that. The Karate. No, I don't want to say anything about the the Secret Life of Bees. More like the Secret Life of D minuses. There you go, uh, Zach. I don't know why you would do something like that. I took time out of my day to come sit here in this chair and, you know, oh, do this interview good. with you. And look, man, a lot of gravitas I, here. I I respect you. I've respected you since The Hangover. I even like your show Baskets. And, you know, I I just wish that you would have just taken the opportunity to realize, damn, I'm hungry. Okay, he's Uh, back. He's back. (laughs) Well, I hope hope the mobsters never catch up to you. Oh. (laughs) Um, And you can get back to your basketball game. Oh, man, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be, wait, what's that knock on the door? Oh, hey, man, hey. hey. No, Uh, hey. uh, hey. You were up to no good. (laughs) Outside of my neighborhood. An explosion! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> this year, 2020, greatest year of human existence, Earwolf turns 10 years old, and Podswag is celebrating with a great new 10th anniversary collection. There's an artist. His name is Bruce Tang. And what he did was he drew all of the CBB anniversary posters over the years. He's done it again with a massive collage of over 100 current and former Earwolf hosts in cartoon form. And Podswag has taken that great art and he's he. (laughs) Is Podswag a he? Might be. Who knows? So Mr. Podswag. Esquire, what he got up to was he took all of that great art. He put it on a bunch of cool stuff. For instance, I got uh, a comfy gray zip hoodie the other day, which I really love. Um, Steel tumblers to keep your drinks in. Padded tablet sleeves for your iPad. uh, And, of course, a classic poster with a frame or without a frame. Whatever, Whatever you're into, you frameless weirdos. All you have to do is go to podswag.com slash earwolf10 to check out the whole collection now. That is podswag.com slash earwolf10. You can even use promo code DECADE at checkout for $10 off your order. That's 10 for 10. Podswag.com slash earwolf10. Earwolf.